Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and I am joined by someone else. The waifu! Um, we don't call you that. What do we call me? Uh, I believe you are now Total Biscuit. That is what I'm told. Yes. You are merely an extension of me, some kind of puppet made of sock. So I am told. <laughs> the internet's always right about such things. We're looking... In fact, we're actually here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Life is Strange. I decided to bring Jen along for this one. We've done this a couple of times before, usually on games that Jen has vastly more experience or some kind of interesting perspective on. Life is Strange is a episodic, or an episodic if we want to be grammatically correct about it, an episodic, narratively driven game involving time travel and high school drama, essentially. And it's by Don't Nod, who are the guys that brought you Remember Me, which most people don't really remember because it, <laughs> it had a really interesting world and it did precisely nothing with it and everything else was completely forgettable. That was the main problem with Remember Me. Ah, excellent. The most phallic of structures over there with the lighthouse. So I can't help but notice you, you brought me along because I have vastly more experience in time travel and high school drama experiences? Well, Is I'm, that what you were trying I, to yes, say Yes, that's exactly what I was oh. saying. We were looking for experience in time travel and high school drama, both of which you have in abundance. But <laughs> I think this is actually supposed to be set in a university setting. I'm not sure, though. It's so weird. It's hard to tell. They, they seem like, like they're about 16, school. 17, 18 ish. I think it's high school, from I'm what I can tell. I'm pretty sure that she is 18, the main character. Um, I think she turned 18. But, but the thing is, there's like there's dorm rooms there's and things like that as well. There's lockers so. and everything. Yeah, I don't it's know. It, 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 it's weird. It's, I I don't have any experience of American universities and American high schools. To me, that looked like a high school. Yeah, I'm the be guy honest. that um she meets later on, Warren, he says something along the lines in his dialogue about it, him being a high school boy. Right. So I'm I'm not sure, but we can establish that this is obviously a. It's young... in an educational setting of yes. some description. There are boats flying everywhere. <laughs> so you're watching the first 20 minutes of it. Uh, since it's a narratively driven game, I'm taking the same approach as I do with all the Telltale stuff that I look at, which is I show you the first 20 minutes and I bring the audio down low enough that if you really want to listen to what we think about the game and not be spoiled on the story, you can minimize the window and just listen to it kind of like a podcast. So that's what we're going to be doing right here. So, Life is Strange. Well, there's an awful lot of talking involved in it, as you might imagine. You can skip some of it, but... The thing is that the, the core, there is an actual core mechanic to this. So if you're looking at this and thinking, oh, this is kind of like a visual novel, I wouldn't say so. Like, in many ways, it's more of a point and click, yeah. I would say. I, I would say more point and click. Obviously, there are several elements throughout the game that you kind of have to really look for. So if yes. you played something like Gone Home, then... Th that's the first immediate comparison yeah. I think a lot of people came up with. But uh, it's got some Gone Home elements in the idea that it does a lot of environmental storytelling. Right. So the thing is that Gone Home was nothing but environmental storytelling, Yeah. Mm -hmm. which is why uh, some people really loved it. Some people thought that it just it wasn't a good video game because it didn't actually have any real game mechanics. But this game absolutely does have a game mechanic. In fact, its core game mechanic, which you learn about very, very early on, is that you can rewind time, which kind of makes sense because Don't Nod's previous title, Remember Me, had a memory remix mechanic that was a bit more complicated than that, but it, it's all about the same principle. You want to change an event, right? and this game lets you do that, and that's the core crux of it, and it then peddles the idea that your choices really matter, which... It's something that we hear a lot, isn't it? You know, in, in things like <laughs> Telltale games, we hear that a lot. And Telltale have, unfortunately, in many of their games, fallen into the trap of providing only an illusion of choice or merely a narrative choice as opposed to an actual real choice that brings up a new scene. I think that if you want a, games that bring up brand new scenes, depending on choices, you're looking at either Bioware stuff or probably David Cage games yeah. in many ways. So you've played the entire thing through twice. So you deliberately went out of your way to do things a little bit differently. Yeah. Bear in mind, this is only the first episode, so we really don't know exactly how much your choices do matter. But in the first episode, what kind of impression did you get when playing it through twice about exactly how much your choices really matter to people? The first playthrough, it was very much like, I guess, the illusion. I felt like, oh, wow, the things that I'm choosing actually do matter because different things happen. There's a, you know, a scene where you're kind of confronted by a bully and you yeah. can choose to be nice to this person or you can choose to be mean to this person and you know based on the choice that you make um depends on whether or not she takes a, a 
kind of a bad photograph of you and post it on a Facebook wall that you can later look at in your dorm room. Um, you know, using that kind of social media is actually kind of cool to, to look at that and be like, oh, you know, I made that happen because I was either mean to this person or nice to this person. Yeah. Although that's a very binary choice, isn't it, when you think about kind it? Kind of, you know, yeah. It, a lot of the choice is binary from what yeah. I've seen. It really is like one way or the other, which is why I'm hoping that the puzzle elements, of which there are some. There are you know, some, yeah. And that's tied in, into the time travel element. It, it, it feels a lot like Fahrenheit when mm-hmm. you do that, particularly the first scene, which I'm not going to spoil. But there is, a, you have to do stuff in a limited amount of time. So you feel like you're scrambling for the solution, which is exactly how Fahrenheit did things. And that's the thing that I love the most about Fahrenheit and to some degree Heavy Rain as well. But at the same time, you can rewind time. So even if you don't, you know, do everything. If you mess it up, order, you can do it again. Yeah, you yeah. can do it again. So, I mean, there's not really, I guess, a, a fail state in a way. Yeah, it's it's an implied failure state. Like there are yeah. some puzzles that are in, impede your progress later on. Right. As you pointed out, there was an issue getting into your room. Yeah. Then, yeah, I actually had to do things in a certain order. Yeah. Yeah, it, so there is an implied failure state. It's yeah. it, it's not a case of like it's not game over. But although, you just can't move on to the next Exactly, which area. is an implied failure state. Right. So it, it is there. It's very much a game, you know. I I think a lot of people went out of their way to prejudge it on the basis of the subject matter, Mm -hmm. which I think is a really piss poor thing to do. Because quite frankly, I love the idea that games are coming out that cover different kinds of characters. Yeah. And I can't really relate to these people, but I don't need to. I don't have to relate to them to find them interesting. Although... Into, I don't think it's the writing per se, because I think the writing is probably spot on for people of this age. Mm-hmm. But simultaneously, I think it might be the voice acting delivery that I find a bit stilted in places. And a lot of the characters, at least from in my experience, in at least in the first episode, they seem fairly one dimensional. But simultaneously, I haven't given them the chance to develop yet. Yeah. You know? So and there's going to be more episodes. This, yeah, this is only, of course, the first episode. I, I found that it was very much catering to the, I guess, quote unquote, you know, hipster that we associate with coming from Oregon, really. I'm not yeah, sure, sure why, but I mean, it just seems like, oh, Oregon, let's make them all like pseudo from Portland and, and give them the same waif hipsterish okay. you know, sort of. I mean, that's and, reasonable. And, and, it's grounded in <laughs> reality. I mean, these stereotypes exist for a reason. It is. But I mean, do you honestly think it's, it's okay to like drive? I've home these stereotypes in, in a game. I mean, that... Well, it's a game. It's a fantasy. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd much rather they do that than have, a, again, just a set of generic kind of characters. Because that what I, the impression that I get from what they're trying to do with Life is Strange is they're trying to meld a very grounded experience in terms of the narrative. Mm-hmm. Something that certainly younger people can relate to directly because they're probably going through very similar issues right now. By being able to turn back time. Uh, <laughs> the time travel is not quite what I was getting at and I hadn't finished what I was saying. Thank you very much. That, they're melding that with the paranormal. Right, okay. And I dig that a great deal. I like television shows that mm-hmm. do that. I kind of hope that it goes full Twin Peaks kind of later on. Yeah. It's given the impression that it could go that way, but simultaneously I'm not 100% sure that they're going to go that far with yeah. it. I think it really kind of came down to the voice acting for me that made this seem a little more of a juvenile type of story. Like the main character's voice is really really young yes and and yeah. it, to me it's not as convincing as a young adult i i really don't think that her voice sounds older than 16 and i know that that might seem a bit harsh but it you know to me it really just drug down the entire like age range for the entire story because i'm supposed to be identifying with this character because i'm playing as her mm. and so for me it, it you know it did definitely pressure me to make certain choices based on what i thought a 16-year-old in high school should be choosing. Well, you're essentially role-playing at that point. Yeah, of course. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't play games the same way that you do. I don't, I don't feel a need to identify with a character in order to enjoy a game. With it being kind of visual novel esque, even though we've already established that this is more point and click. I guess because it's narratively driven. But simultaneously, like I'll happily read a book about a character I will never be. You know, yeah. and I, I don't have to identify. It, the, the, the main point is the character has to be interesting. Yeah. It's got to be well written. And I think that there's definitely some of that there. I mean, it's a pretty good start, but I think it also comes down to, as you said, the voice acting, the delivery isn't quite there. Yeah. Just it, there's something about it that doesn't quite feel right that makes it a little bit difficult. But 
you know, what you're seeing on the screen right now to me is really cool. I mean, not only mm-hmm. is the visual style quite striking, uh, I, I love the the use of uh, the sort of the pencil style that's yeah. going on right there. That's really nice. And the amount of detail, like when I opened that journal earlier, yeah. the amount of detail that's that in there. And, it. and it's the high. Art style is really It's really good. nice, high resolution detail yeah. as well. Like, Can David, I- can I mention about this scene, by the way, that, you know, as she's putting the headphones and the earbuds in, you know, that's when the opening, like, music Theme actually starts. In. That's a nice touch. The music in this game is phenomenal. I think it's actually really, really good, and it's well-placed in so many of the scenes. It just, it, yes. it flowed so well for me. It fits completely with what with the theme and with it the does. aesthetic and with the place that you're in, which is exactly what I thought about Gone Home as well. Like, yeah. I, I think that's why a lot of people really like Gone Home, particularly if they had a lot of 90s nostalgia. Yeah. in that title and I think that you can really soak in the atmosphere that way Definitely. and I think the music very much helps with the atmosphere in this along with I, I think you're kind of maybe playing the game wrong if you don't wander around and read everything and absorb everything about the environment and I feel like I'll probably miss a clue if I don't do that anyway mm-hmm. but you were pointing out that it's actually possible to speed run this game oh it is very easily yeah. like you can you can go you can how how long did it take you to beat your second run? You were claiming my like second run it thirty was, minutes. It, was, it seemed like between like thirty minutes and maybe it maybe tapped out about forty five minutes. And yeah, I but think you, you that skipped was, like everything. Oh yeah, right? basically you, from here I you know answered all the the questions in the classroom and went straight to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Did not read any of this stuff. Did not talk to any unnecessary people. There are people and characters you know in this game. People and characters. <laughs> redundancy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> ah, I you're I well. the department of redundancy departments. Yes. <laughs> Um, there are certain sections of this game, you know, where there are people that you do need to speak to in order to progress to, to the advance, next. Yes. But there are certain elements that are that are definitely optional. Stuff. They're definitely optional, but I find that the small things are actually kind of what tends to almost matter most in this game, in a way. Like, uh, there is a scene, obviously I'm not trying to spoil too much, but there is this nice little scene outside on the lawn, which you guys probably see in a, a few minutes. I don't um, think we quite get that far. I'm not I did sure get did. I did get to that scene, but oh, I, okay. not, I, th- I don't think I filmed that far. Well, where there's a student who who sketches a picture of you. Yes. And you know it's a it's a nice little interaction. It's very sweet and endearing. And then later when you check your Facebook wall, they have posted it to the Facebook wall. And that is that is an optional thing. You don't even have to talk to him to move on to the next um, area in the game. So the fact that something that you did that sh- seems maybe so small and insignificant you know can actually make that kind of an impact later on in the game you know that's, well that's i'd nice. also like to point out that like maybe i'm going a bit too like full polygon here but i do feel that this butterfly probably has some symbolism in the the whole chaos effect idea well i mean that the smallest things can affect the, uh, great things the, later the on first episode is called chrysalis so what do you think they, they are pushing but yeah i think they might be pushing the chaos we effect in quite a bit it, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think i'm over analyzing that i think no. that's probably exactly what they're going for there but I, I was, I, I was again, finding myself very intrigued by the little details because I thought that they'd probably matter at some point. So I was trying to take in as much as I could. Yeah. Uh, but simultaneously, the, the voice acting was, was kind of the, the weaker element of it. And there's a lot of it. There's a lot of cut scenes in this game. Yeah. You can skip some stuff, but not all of it, especially considering that you have to do t- the time rewind thing. Yes. Which we're going, we will see on the screen fairly shortly, and we'll be able to demonstrate how that mechanic actually works. It's relatively simple. I mean, it's it's not exactly a complex mechanic. It's uh, this this seems like a game that has a very very low barrier to entry, mm-hmm. and simultaneously could potentially have some very intriguing puzzles and ideas later down the line. But it's an episodic game, which is always it's always very hard to look at an episodic game and predict exactly what's going to happen later. It's the same thing I said about Game of Thrones. I'm like, look, this is a good start, mm-hmm. but if nothing that I did matters, then it's not going to feel great later. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be disappointed by it. Now, considering that we're we're at this part in the game, can we talk about social issues here for just a moment? Do you do you as, want to? As far as right. like, for example. You know, we are dealing with a game that is presenting the subject of mental illness. I mean, obviously, by this character yes. here, we're you know dealing with violence against women right here in video games, and later in the game, we also see violence against men as well. I mean, mm-hmm. what do you what are your feelings or opinions on the fact that you know this game is addressing both sides of the spectrum? It's not obviously just one sided. Like here, it's against women. You know, me, a, a, you know, a male character having a problem obviously with some sort of mental coping. 
you know, do you find that that is a good thing that we should see this more in games going forward? It, it, it really depends on the game. Like, I think if you're going to go for a very grounded narrative experience, then having characters with those issues can be very strong in terms of the story, and it can help in terms of development. Obviously, having having a male character with a mental issue and uh, issues of, of aggression and possibly narcissism and power fantasies and that sort of thing is very, very relevant. Mm -hmm. And if the game wants to touch on a lot of social issues as it's going, I think this is just the right environment to do it in. It doesn't feel shoehorned in. Right. And I don't think we should be ignoring that stuff. There was, there was loads of space in the market for every kind of video game. That You can have your Call of Duties, you can have your Life's, Life is Strange, you can have your Gone Home, you can have whatever you like, and it's going to appeal to specific kinds of audiences. And you'd be surprised. You know, people will try things that they perhaps feel a little bit out of their comfort zone. And the same person that is enjoying a match of Call of Duty, knowing that it is just a, a fun little fantasy, can also enjoy Life is Strange and maybe get involved a little bit more in it. You know, it's the same reason why... Why I watch a lot of I watch a lot of dramas and kind of suspenseful things, and obviously I'm binging on The West Wing for the yeah, second time right now. <laughs> but then I'll go and play Darkest Dungeon, and you yeah. know all I care about is min maxing and all that sort of stuff. I'm sorry, but like humans are complicated, and gamers in particular are actually surprisingly accepting of a lot of different genres if they're done properly. Yeah, it's when it feels shoehorned in when they're doing it, when they're throwing social issues at the sake of it, like Borderlands writing always does this always it's awful <laughs> it's just terrible it shoves it right in your face and says, hey hey look at me look at me this game doesn't do it's, that it's kind of subtle um the only thing i i think as far as the writing style that i did not care for in this game um was really kind of the name dropping you got you got way too much of that going on um and that's like the only thing that kind of ruined it for me mm. a little bit yeah. it was just like uh, name dropping, name dropping, name dropping. I get that these are real people in in these you know different you know fields of photography and art, but it's just that was kind of the only thing that didn't seem to fit just right. Well, I, I mean, if the character's a photography nerd, then it kind of makes sense that they sort of break that stuff out. And I do also appreciate that they're trying to look into and give a little bit of knowledge to the player of an area that. It's just never covered, you know. It's mm -hmm. I don't know anything about photography. I felt like I learned a little bit more by playing this game. There's nothing oh, wrong with I, I like learning little little cool facts from games. And again, it's the right environment, which is always going to be the most yeah. important part. It is a game grounded in a high school slash educational setting in America. That these are the kind of things that happen. These are the kind of things that get addressed, and this is the right kind of game to address them in. Mm -hmm. It's when it's the wrong kind of game to address them in that things feel very jarring, and it really feels like the writer is just trying to push their agenda on you rather than create a good video game. It was Rihanna Pratchett that said it the best, and I agree with her till the end of time on this. Don't you know? Don't go out of your way saying I'm going to write a strong woman. Go out of your way saying I'm going to write a good character. Oh yeah. That's all that matters. That is all that matters. The gender becomes relevant at that point write a good character i mean even the the main character that we have in this game could have easily been a male and, could have. and the same exact experiences could have translated you know over to not that necessarily not, Do you not think so well the thing is we don't obviously know the content of the rest of the games well okay yes this is true but, but as far as episode one is concerned i i mean well the entire the entire girls bathroom scene in particular you you brought up the the game addresses both mental illness mm -hmm. and violence against women. I don't know if you can necessarily make the argument of violence against women because uh, was she shot because she was a woman or was she shot because she was shot? You know, I mean, yeah. it's it, but but the whole scene is in the girl's bathroom. You know, mm -hmm. it's if it was a man, it would have been a different thing entirely. It may have even been different the way that you approach the and this was just a little background scene there, that kid getting bullied. Right. Do you approach it differently because your character's a female? Or, you know, if your character was a male, would the game's writers have perhaps said, well, a male character is more likely to get involved in some way. Mm -hmm. Either he's going to join in the bullying or he's going to try and break it up. Whereas a female character more than likely is going to try and avoid the confrontation. And that's really interesting to me because that's where the gender makes a difference in the game in a narrative sense and maybe even in a mechanical sense and i love that idea it's one of the only things that i really liked about assassin's creed uh, liberation mm -hmm. where the main character was female she had mechanics tied into the fact that she was female and the the treatment of females at the time particularly in the case of her uh, black female character was key not only to the narrative but to the mechanics that's how you do it that's how you do it and i love that idea so if if life is strange can continue to do that and actually make the narrative really interesting and maybe even tie in game mechanics and events to to the genders or even to something else like it's just to, to the 
just the the ideas that the characters have and just their different personality quirks then you've got a great narrative experience mm-hmm. that's that's it so and so far i think uh, this is a pretty good start yeah you know, there's a lot to like about it there's a lot to be impressed about it and i think the time rewind could be really interesting it is later on in the game much more so than the first time rewind event this is kind of more like almost like a tutorial sort yes of, in absolutely a way. that's yeah that's what we're Self-guided. Showing. we don't want to show you anything that's a kind yeah. of a big spoiler or ruin a puzzle or anything like that but i think that it's it's got a lot of potential you could do a huge amount with time rewinding and again it reminds me of fahrenheit except hopefully the dog didn't eat the script halfway through <laughs> There's the, those early moments in Fahrenheit where you're cleaning up your apartment as there's a cop knocking on the door. That's a that's a really powerful, stressful scene. I think it's yeah. really well delivered. And this game has the potential to do loads of that. In fact, it might be entirely based around scenes like that. Time-based, figuring things out, rewinding time. And yes, of course, you, you get to undo your actions, which obviously makes it a little bit maybe less stressful. Mm-hmm. In fact, it makes it a lot less stressful, but... I can sort of I can sort of dig it. You know, you still got to figure out a puzzle one way or the other. You just might have infinite attempts in order to do it. Do you? How do you feel about the um, the idea that you're able to see um, the results at the in the end as far as like you know how many people made this choice? You know, certain percentage. It's a telltale thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, how, how do you feel about that? Especially with this first instance, I was actually very happy with that. I I don't I don't hate that they did that. Mm-hmm. I, I I I don't hate that they did that. It's, I think there's a there's a there's a nice element of mystery. It's not like you have to look at it. Like you could you could close the game, make a- sure you don't you see it. After you finish the first episode, I think it automatically comes up. I'm yeah, not I guess in- you're gonna get surprised by it one way or the other. It's like, yeah. oh damn, I didn't want to see that. It would be nice if at the start of the game it says, do you want to know that? That's mm-hmm. something I would like to Telltale Games to do as well. It's like, do you really want to know that information, or would you prefer just to to go it without knowing what other people? Oh do? no, I went it without knowing at all until the end. The end mm-hmm. is where I discovered how yeah. many people made that choice. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I just thought it was great that so many people actually made the choice to tell. Yes. And that that made me so happy, especially I in, told. in in an education it, it system sense to me. setting. That that just made me so happy that yeah. so many people felt that that was okay. Mm, yeah. Well, uh, as I say, conclusion on it, it's an interesting start. Like, I, I don't know if I'll play the whole thing through. Obviously, I'll probably wait till the till I finish the thing, and then I'll just play the whole thing through at that point. I, I, I don't think I necessarily mind just watching it played, honestly. But that's the same way with me and Telltale Games as well. It's not like this game's doing anything specifically different that's making me not necessarily want to finish it. But you know me, the kind of point-and-click narrative style of game is not my thing Mm -hmm. it's not a genre that i'm particularly into but you like it a lot i do i very much like so what's your kind of parting thoughts on it i just i don't really care so much for episodic things i I, I wish it was all out and i could play it from beginning to end yeah i agree that's the only thing other than that i think it's a great game yeah i think it's a pretty solid start Uh, i personally am not particularly interested in it but simultaneously that doesn't really matter you know you very well might be based on what you've seen so there you go folks our thoughts on life is strange the first episode you can get for five bucks or you can subscribe to the whole season pass to get i believe the five episodes which it's going to be in my name has been total biscuit joined by jenna thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time